Today we have Henry of God Dethrone. How are you doing? Good. So I'm yesterday, fine. crushing set. Yeah, thanks. At FNR. Was it the first time you guys played Eindhoven? No, we played Eindhoven many times. Okay. But, uh, you know, Eindhoven Metal Meeting is a special thing. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's like home? Yeah, it feels like home, but there's also a lot of pressure on a show like this. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of press. Um, Dutch people are not always the easiest audience <laughs> to play for because they are spoiled. They see all the bands, you know. Yeah. But this year, for the first time, there was more people from outside Holland mm -hmm. than from inside. In, uh, in the past couple of years, it was like 40% tickets were sold to people outside Holland. Okay. This year, for the first time, 70% of the tickets were sold to people outside Holland. Oh, so, so that's, that's, that's quite are, special. I've seen everything then. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, there's so many festivals nowadays. It yeah. takes so much money, you know. Yeah. Uh, some people just choose, choose and pick there are specific festivals to go to, mm -hmm. and um, but you know it's a great festival. It's a good atmosphere, as yeah. you can tell yeah. for yourself, you know. And uh, but it was a great show. Wonderful. And about the the lineup, uh, is that something that excited you this year as compared to the previous yeah, editions? It's, it, no, it's, I think uh, Roman every year he has a, like a great lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, he always finds some special bands, and he also puts bands in the lineup that you would not expect. Yeah, maybe. it's a good combination of, of let's say the underground bands yeah. and, and kind of commercial bands. Yeah, yeah. but it's he always he always gets the good bands mm -hmm. and uh, he always gives a chance to bands who don't get the chance to play all the big festivals. Yeah, yeah. But he says they are good bands, I'm gonna take them for my festival. Wonderful. And, so and, and, the, and the audience enjoys it a lot. Uh, no? Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Just in terms so. of playing, because you, uh, you know you guys are from from Holland, yeah, so yeah. Uh, you know playing here and playing in Europe in general, but has been a difference for you, uh, you know, as a as a musician when you travel around the world and see the difference in the number of fans you come across based in the region. What difference do you find in terms of that? Like something which you say, oh shit, I didn't see this happening in the Holland or in Germany. Well, it depends. It depends a lot on how many bands the audience gets to see. Yeah. I mean, a couple of years ago, we toured South America, and we played a show, two shows in Ecuador, mm -hmm. and um, we were on the stage. It was a small stage, and we had uh, we didn't we couldn't bring our own backlight, of course. Yeah. So we had this little combo amplifiers on the stage, mm -hmm. and then the sound guy was in the audience with a mixing desk. But the audience got so wild that the mixing desk was like an island floating around. <laughs> in between the audience and then on stage everything went down all the amps went down oh. and I, I i was so lucky that i still had all my teeth and my mouth <laughs> after the show because there's a microphone stand in front of me because i have to play guitar yeah, yeah. and the crowd was so wild that everything got destroyed and it was oh. like the most incredible show i ever played in my life <laughs> but that's because those people don't get that many shows yeah that's so the it's so special to them yeah. yeah to see that and over here they get to see all the shows yeah so you're people are like, okay, do your thing, yeah. I'm gonna watch, you know? Right, so right. it's a totally different world. But nevertheless, um, we, we cannot complain. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, good following. Yeah. We have loyal fans, you know? We have fans that have been there for many, many years. Uh, we have fans that are were not even born when I started, started. the band. Mm -hmm. And they have all the albums, and they are so happy to see us. And it seems like they don't go away so easily. Right. You know, we are not a band that's a hype mm -hmm. one day and it's gone the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are a band that's always steady. We're not the biggest band, but we're always on the same yeah. level. And there will be bands that grow bigger than us, mm -hmm. and then a couple of years later they're gone, oh, no. and yeah, we are yeah. still there on that same level. That's true. I mean, you know, even it's been a few years since, I mean, the, you guys stopped thinking about writing an unbracket. So is that something that's changed from the last three years in terms of like, let's write something you know, because it's been quite a while since we worked. Because your last two albums, you know where they stand. You know how yeah. fans regard them. Yeah. What happened after that? Why, why stop? I stopped because I needed some time for myself. Uh -huh. okay. Kind of like recharge the batteries? Sort of? Yeah, I was, I was playing with the band for 20 years and uh, there were some personal issues I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. I never got the time to sit down, relax, and think about things and change certain things in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did in the past three years. I changed everything, everything. in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I realized, actually, I realized that during a funeral, mm -hmm. it was the funeral of Michael Stringer. Uh, he was the, the main man of Metal Blade Europe. Okay. He signed us back in 96. Mm -hmm. And he was my main motivator from Metal Blade to do the albums, okay. to do tours. Yeah. 
and he died. And I was at a funeral in Germany, and I was there with the guys of Armona Marv, uh, guys from the record label, guys from Nuclear Blast, yeah. because he worked for Nuclear yeah. Blast in the past also. Okay. And that, at that day I realized, man, I missed this so much. Your inspirational factor is not there because he was like someone who was behind God dethroned about yeah. guys. Come on, let's write an album. Yeah, but no, but also he supported us always, yeah. with the, all his whole his heart. And um, I was there that day, and I thought, like, man, I missed it so much. And uh, it, it took me another year to, to to get all my things straight, mm -hmm. and then I said, okay, now it's time. And now so, it's time. Yeah, and so uh, we started again on the 70,000 tons of metal yeah. cruise yes. this yes. year, January uh, 2015. That's actually where we finished in 2012. So exactly three years later, we start again where we finished three years earlier. And that was great. We came on stage, we were the first band of the day on the main stage. And we came on stage after three years. After three years, and the audience they cheered to us like Iron Maiden was coming on stage. You know, <laughs> that's it was, amazing. It was amazing, yeah. Wonderful. So, in terms of writing an album, have you thought about doing that? You know, now that we are, know. we have already recorded two songs. Oh, it's cool. only two songs, but it was like a tryout. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, which direction do we go? Okay. It's, um, you know, it's. I, I tried to do something not that typical God the Throne, mm -hmm. but in the end it's still it turns God out to Throne. Be that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's still God the Throne and uh, but uh, yeah, it's only two songs and we decided to record the album in parts. Okay. We write a couple of songs, mm -hmm. we go to the studio, record the drums and some, some scrap guitars, mm -hmm. take it home, uh, you know, listen carefully, can we change something for ah, the better? Okay. And then and we're gonna work like that for uh, the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I, hopefully before the summer, we have the whole album recorded. Right? Wow, so 2016 marks the return of the new God Be Thrown yeah, album. Yeah, I think hopefully Metal Blade will You guys have a con one, a, one more album signed with, two. with Metal Two albums, okay. Two al yeah, we have, the, we have the third contract now. We had a contract, the first contract was for four albums. Mm -hmm. Then we had a new contract with three albums, which is like the standard now for Metal yeah, Blade. Yeah. And that one was finished by... Uh, Fashion deal, yeah. and then we signed another uh, contract yeah. with three albums, and that so one. Two more left. Yeah, so uh, under the sign of the yeah, Iron Cross was the first one. Right. Then we had a three-year break, and now we're gonna do the second one for the new contract, and then we have one more, and uh, yeah, but hopefully it won't take that long all the time, you know, to write a new album. So in terms of musical direction, where is it heading to now? I mean, you are a World War lover in terms of. You know, exploring it. I mean, I, I see, I see everywhere bands trying to talk about World War Two, but you are a person who went in depth about World War One. I, I yeah, know because yeah. you know, passion. You actually wanted to write a trilogy. Yeah. You finished two albums, but yeah. the last part is still pending. That's so the is one that that's coming now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. see. You know, okay. I'm a history freak. Yeah. On all the albums, we have uh, at least one or two songs that deal with Dutch history. Yeah. You know, uh, Michiel de Ruiter, our big sailor from mm -hmm. from the past. Uh, uh, Willem Barens, who also was a sailor, who went to Nova Zembla, and uh, we have a song about a flying Dutchman, you know, soul catcher, and uh, so then I decided to write something about World War One because we had a Belgian guitar player for many years. He's now playing in Epica. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Isaac de la Haye. Isaac de la Haye. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he lives in Eiper in Belgium, and mm -hmm. that's. Um, that was the only part of Belgium that was not captured by the Germans in World War One. Okay. And when you go there. It's unbelievable. You see so many, you see so many uh, graves of World War One. You see all the monuments. Okay. There's a big museum about World War One, but most of all, when you go into a pub on a Saturday night, it's filled with people from England, Ireland, mm -hmm. Scotland, and they are there to visit the graves of their relatives who died in World War One every I, I single week and again, and they get drunk. Mm -hmm. And they sing louder than the audio system, <laughs> and it impressed me so much that I, we went to the museum and uh, I went into reading books about World War One and looking up stuff on the internet. And I thought, like, wow, this is so impressive. Let's do something with it, you okay. know. And, and nobody did that before because everybody, maybe some bands have, an, have a song about World War One, like yeah, Mod yeah. Red, Iron yeah. Maiden. Yeah. So I decided to do a concept album about World War Focus One on since I'm a history freak anyway. So, and then we did the Passion Deal, it was received very well. Excellently. And then uh, we did uh, Under the Sun, Cross, I thought, okay, let's do a trilogy. Let's make three albums about World War One. 
and then we do something else again. We go back to the roots like uh, some, uh, I don't know, Satan stuff <laughs> <laughs> or something, uh, you know. That's amazing because, you know, after, after a long time you guys are hiding back, so the expression. Yeah, that's I cool. mean, when we write the new songs, it's like, is this good enough? Mm, I don't know, you know, it changes things and yeah, try to write songs that are memorable, yeah, that yeah. are catchy, that are strong. That last longer actually in the memory of fans because yeah. these days there's so much metal in there. Yeah. Like, you know, you listen to a song for five minutes and you forget about it. Yeah. So that's something which is become too, way too accessible now for fans. Yeah. So many bands, yeah. so many albums coming out. So an album which is, you remember, you can listen to it like even a year and it still feels fresh. Yeah. That's something which is very rare right now. Yeah, that's true. And everything has been done. Yeah. Every riff has been played. <laughs> so I have to come up with stuff that stands out from the rest. Yeah. It's pretty and difficult. And even has a God different style in it. Yeah, that's but that's... Point. My style is the God is wrong style. Yeah. When I write something, it's my style, so it is automatically a God is wrong style. But nevertheless, the standard is high nowadays. Mm -hmm. Metal Blade expects a lot. Our fans expect a lot. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a difficult. Of pressure. It's a lot, lot of, pressure. of pressure. Yeah, so I, this time I, I take my time. Normally I would write an album in six to eight weeks, and now it's going to take longer. Also because I have my guitar company and yeah. uh, I have a lot of work to do, so. Yeah. Interesting year ahead for you guys. Then. Yeah, but it's gonna be good. Absolutely. And is any touring gonna happen as you guys continue to write on the album? Like um, something? Is there anything like confirmed so far? Maybe a tour or festival dates or something? Well, festival dates. Yeah, we have some some smaller festivals coming up early in the year, like the Easter Festival in southern Germany. Mm -hmm. We are confirmed for a Grasshopper Metal Meeting, okay. which is an, an awesome thing. And uh, so as the year progresses, we get more and more offers. Yeah, of course, with the album coming up again, this will be a, yeah. you guys might tour Europe again, maybe later near the next year. Yeah, or something. you know, it depends uh, how well the album is received, what offers we get. Yeah. Um, you know, we never could complain. I mean, for under the sign of the Iron Cross, we got so many tour offers, we could tour non-stop for two years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just couldn't take it anymore at that time. So I, I decided not to do it. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, we have done many great shows this year, and uh, we'll see what happens in 2016. We already Wonderful. have some nice shows lined up, so that should be good. That's amazing. So, yeah, yeah wishing you all the best. Uh, look forward to the new album. It's been a long time yeah. since it's kind of got a taste of new stuff, so yeah. it should be interesting that you know, we get Yeah, when a new album new comes out, it's at least six years in between. So. Yeah, that's so a long time. Yeah, that's a long time. All right, thank you. Yeah, man. An honor having a chat. So, you know, the clock needs to switch quickly so that we get it <laughs> yeah. soon. So. Just be pacing a little bit more <laughs> yeah. and then it will be fine. Thanks. Yeah. All right.